this is going to be part three of the three coil spatial resonance demo. Here what I have is my L3 that I used in the first two videos. This end is open at this time. I have the spectrum analyzer probe stuck in this end. And I have an AV plug hooked to the left end of the coil feeding into the power rails of this modified 18-1. And I have a 10 microfarad capacitor sitting across the power rails of the 18-1. We'll go up here and take a look at the spectrum analyzer and we'll see that at this time we have nothing really coming out of that coil, just background noise. This is my marker that's moving along here. So I'm going to go ahead and hook my earth ground up to this coil and we'll see if it makes a difference. Okay, so now I have my earth ground connected up, that same clip lead that's going over here to the uh, lab ground through the power system, my L3, my probe from the spectrum analyzer, my AV plug, my modified 18-1. This coil is just sitting here. It's not doing anything we're going to use in a minute. Let's go up and see now what we have on that coil. Well, interestingly enough, we have something again different. Now you've got to realize that every time we change the loading or the input impedance of that coil, we're going to be shifting the spatial resonant frequency. So what I want to do is move over here. Obviously we have two peaks at this time. And right there is one which is at 13.5. And actually it's probably closer to 13.6. But I don't want to expand it out right here. And this particular peak is running at 14.6. So you can see we've got uh, a different signal again than we've had in part one and part two. Now what we want to do is we will make the assumption that if we can obtain any energy at all from this ground connection via the spatial resonance of this coil feeding the AV plug that with any luck at all we could get some type of output from this oscillator provided it can drive this this particular circuit. So let me go ahead and hook up a load to it and let's see if we can see anything coming out of it. Here we have the load coil hooked into the 18-1. I have it alongside of the L3 that's connected to the ground. And let's see if we can see any difference here on the spectrum analyzer. And we see now that we've lost our second spike that we had right here. Let me move the marker over. We've changed impedances again due to the loading on the drive rail 3 and also the change caused by the proximity of the output coil. And we're looking at 14.4 now there. And we have this little guy here which comes and goes. And what's happening is we're just on the verge of that 18.1 going into full oscillation. Let me move the marker over to here. And we can see it's running at 2310, about the approximate center. Let me go ahead and readjust these coils again, and we'll see if we can improve it somewhat. Let me get that probe back in that coil, and we'll get adjusted. I think I've got it set properly. We got our probe in. Okay, here we go. And now we can see we've got a much better, much better spike. Let me move the marker over to more in the center of it. 23.5. And this one again is at 14.5, 14.6. Now to show that that is indeed coming out of the, the uh, 18.1, let me pull the transistor out of here and go up and look at the spectrum analyzer again. And all we're going to see is another spike which of course is shifted in frequency because of the changes in impedances. But this guy's at 18.5, totally irrelevant compared to the rest of them. But that's what the coil that we have the probe in is now resonating at with all of the other peripheries sitting around it. But you can see that once I remove the transistor, our oscillation and feedback stopped. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go to part four, and we're going to try to improve yet on this two-coil system.